ketogenic diet, when done right, is high in fat, very low in carbohydrates, and moderate in protein. That takes some rethinking of your food choices, and that's what we'll discuss in this episode of Two Fit Docs. Hi, I'm Dr. Becky. I'm a college instructor of the Science of Nutrition. And I'm Dr. Keith. I'm a chiropractor in private practice for the past 26 years, and you're watching Two Fit Docs, where we take weight loss resistance, turn it into weight loss results. And we've already done that following our guinea pig who uh, started a, a weight loss journey a little over eight months ago at the starting weight of 238 eight. and is now at 169, 169 and holding strong and building some muscle. And um, so if you have, uh, if you're looking to do a ketogenic diet, well, that's what he, this guy followed. So we encourage you to go back to our channel and kind of binge watch Keith's progress from start to, to finish. It's a fun thing to and watch. And I'm still following. And you are still following, absolutely. And so uh, we, we've obviously, because our channel has, has kind of caught on now, uh, we've been getting a lot of questions about how to start a ketogenic diet properly and some mistakes to, to avoid. So we wanted to go over three foods that we um, get asked about a lot that create problems. Meat choices, dairy choices, and watching out for hidden sugars. So. Let's go ahead and start with that. Meat choices, you want to start? Sure, so I have a lot of my patients who come in. Obviously, they've seen the weight I've lost. They want to know what I'm doing. So we talk about the ketogenic diet, and then they'll tell me that you know they're, they're, they are trying to eat pretty healthy. They're mm -hmm. eating turkey and chicken and vegetables and things like that. Um, and I have to kind of sit them down and say, look, you, in order to do the ketogenic diet, you need to really relearn all the things that we've been taught over the last few decades. Um, we were always eating lean poultry, lots of protein, turkey, chicken, boneless chicken breast, things like that. You can't do that on a ketogenic diet. You're going to get too much protein, which we'll talk about in a minute. Um, but really, you need that fat. Mm -hmm. And so you have to make fattier meat choices, mm -hmm. um, which, in my opinion, makes it more delicious. But it, right. it, it is something that you have to get through your head. Right, definitely a mind, mindset shift yep. uh, when you want to do a ketogenic diet. And there's nothing wrong with chicken breasts and things, and things like that. There's certainly nothing wrong with it. But if your goal is to do a ketogenic diet, then you need to rethink things. Right. So when we go to the grocery store, um, say we're going to buy ground meat, uh, we, we will not buy ground turkey, we'll buy ground beef. Right. Because beef is a fattier meat than, than turkey. And of course, you have different quality standards. So your grass-fed beef is going to be your highest sta um, standard and then organic and then really just your, your you know, your, basically your grocery store fare that's, that's there is going to be, right. uh, you know, at the bottom still. And your lean amount too in the meat. Talk yes. about that a little bit. Right. So when we pick out a, a green, a, a ground beef, we'll go for 80-20, meaning 80% lean 20% fat, and right. that's just how Because you can buy 85% lean, 90% lean. Exactly. Right. So it, we've been conditioned into this low-fat mindset. It's hard to get away from it. Even when we started you on this ketogenic diet, it Definitely. was still hard for us to get back. So you just have to be looking, you know, fat is not bad, fat is um, hunger satisfying, and it's keeping your insulin low, which is going to keep you in fat burning mode. That's right. Um, Let's talk just a second about chicken, because chicken is also another meat that is very uh, often on the dinner table. Um, so chicken breast compared to chicken thighs, what would we pick? Now we would pick chicken thighs mm -hmm. because they're a little bit fattier content. And, you know, we try to do all of our cooking. If we're cooking with chicken, you keep the skin on yep. uh, because that, that, again, kind of raises that fat level up. And I think it makes it taste better. Mm -hmm. um, and we wanted to talk a little bit about the protein, the fact that you can get too much protein. Yes. Um, so even though we're having meat, mm -hmm. we're, you know, we're still keeping it at a moderate level, the protein in our, in our diet. Right. So a lot of times the seafoods that we have, we have to keep them somewhat limited uh, because they are a leaner choice and they're higher in protein. So you do have to keep your protein under control. It's a great thing, though, that you can have, you know, shrimp, scampi, and garlic butter and everything in butter. I mean... It is yes. So you can add you can add fats to, to those uh, indeed. All right. So watch your watch your your meat choices. Let's go into dairy, which is another big big area. Now um, some people do have problems with dairy because of either uh, a problem with digesting the lactose, which is the sugar in dairy foods, um, or 
the proteins, the dairy proteins are sometimes a problem for people. Um, but if they're, if they're not, or you make the right choices of dairy, you can, you can utilize them in a ketogenic diet in a very positive way. You have done that. Right. So I'm lucky I can, I can eat all the dairy and mm -hmm. I really like it. So we, we don't utilize any milk anymore. Mm -hmm. Um, we typically are going for heavy whipping cream. Mm -hmm. If we need some type of, you know, liquid, you know, milk substitute or, it's really good in coffee. It's good in everything. It's right. just good. <laughs> right. um, a lot of cheeses, and typically hard cheeses, are going to be mm -hmm. lower in your lactose right. than soft cheeses. Softer the cheese gets, I think the the, the more you're, you're apt to have some more of that lactose in there. Right. So, and and that's a that's a good point. So, if it's high in the milk sugar, well, it's a higher carbohydrate. Uh, dairy. So, so do a little investigating when you're in the dairy aisle of your of your grocery store. Just turn the turn it over. If it's low in carbohydrates, say there's maybe one and a half grams of carbs in in a serving. Well, it's it's naturally going to be low in lactose. So it might be you know okay for you on a on a ketogenic diet. So when we go into the dairy aisle, um, we will pick. Um, uh, full fat sour cream over low fat sour cream. Full fat. Uh, cream cheese over low fat cream cheese. Um, I want to say something about yogurt because I get a lot of comments about yogurt. Uh, yogurt is one of those foods that uh, is very confusing. We, um, if you look at your dairy aisle and you look at the yogurts, you are going to have a very, very hard time finding a full fat yogurt. Almost all of those choices are either non-fat or low fat. I, I don't recommend I don't recommend them on any diet because when they take the fat out, they put sugar in. Right. And finding it, we've tried to find a low fat or a, not a low fat, a low carb yogurt. Um, and it's almost impossible. Mm -hmm. To get a full fat yogurt that doesn't have any sugar added, you have to go out, go to your health food aisle. At the and even store. then, I think it's tough. Yeah. Yeah. So, so those are um, uh, dairy foods and making the right dairy choices. Last one, let's talk about hidden sugars. Mm -hmm. So hidden sugars, my rule for sugar is if sugar is listed as one of the top three ingredients, you don't want to pick that food. Now, the problem is food manufacturers understand that trick as well. So they will disguise sugar by giving it different names like... Uh, high fructose corn syrup. Right. Or dextrose is a big one. Maltodextrin. Right. Uh, we have agave. Honey. Um, Fruit juice concentrate oh, is a, a big is a big one. Molasses. Molasses. Um, so. Sorghum. Okay. Uh, cane pure cane sugar they'll yep. put in there sometimes to make it sound right like it or does. organic sugar yeah. to make it sound better. Yeah. We'll put a we'll put a, a bigger list below our video here in the description for you. Um, but you just you have to watch out for those hidden sugars. If any of those names are within the top three ingredients, um, it is probably a bad one for you. Notorious foods for hidden sugars condiments that's right so we've switched we've made some switches we have so i like to eat the meatloaf we have a meatloaf mm -hmm. recipe we talked about before uh, i like to have a little bit of ketchup on there but you know you can't uh, just a regular ketchup you can't do that it's got a lot of sugar in it yeah we have found a low sugar it's not sugar free but at least a low sugar ketchup that mm -hmm. i can have a little bit of and actually i've kind of switched most of the time to um the condiment kind of i use most is mustard because right. it has no calories at all right Right, so mustard's a good choice. You have to watch out for barbecue sauces. You have to watch out for mayonnaise. Steak um, sauces, barbecue sauces, mayo, mm -hmm. salad dressings. Salad dressings are a big one, right? Because we often see sugars put into salad dressings. Right. So just be, you know, start to become a detective if you're going to go in for, for a ketogenic diet. Make sure you're chain, turning that product over, looking at the ingredients and making sure, sure sugar is not in the top three ingredients. So there you go when you're starting your ketogenic diet. Watch your meat choices, watch your dairy choices, and watch out for hidden sugars. And if you are just getting started, a great place for you to start is by downloading our starter kit. It shows the foods that Keith took out of his diet and those he added um, to get the great weight loss results that he's gotten. So, go ahead. And make sure you subscribe to our channel. Uh, we'll be back next week uh, with, a, with another, uh, another episode yeah. of Two Fit Docs.